Welcome to the channel. I'm Reverend Dr. J.W. Morrison, Theologist, Gosford, Central Coast, New South Wales, Australia. As you can see, I'm also a bricklayer, but hey, Jesus was a carpenter. We all gather different skills and we use them to the best of our capabilities. We pass them on to the young guys, show them how to succeed and to become rich, how to use their money wisely and make right choices. I'd say that's being a parent, wouldn't you? Let's look into some relationship stuff. Let's look at what happens when the covert narcissists run into the super empath. Let's see what happens, what the fallout is, and what the blessings are. Like, share, subscribe. Let's get started. Life. The choices we make, the things that we do with the time that we have. The way we deal with our past. It's all got to do with reality the way things impact us, how we manage our relationships and how we try and develop, what we know about human nature. Well, human nature has a fallen side to it and it bends us towards evil. And if you're not aware of it, things can get really out of sorts. You have to be aware. You have to be awakened. And many of you in the masses aren't awakened. You haven't had your spiritual awakening, but the light's been there the whole time. You just haven't come into it. So what happens if you accidentally meet someone that's walking in the light? and you're just drawn to it and you start to come out of the darkness and but this light's revealing things that are so fascinating and so powerful and so addictive you're starting to forsake decades of lifestyle destructive lifestyle that's been passed on down generations Choices that just led nowhere and did nothing except meet a moment. A moment that only led to aggravation, disappointment, resentment, betrayal, hostility, aggravation, anger. Reckless sex. Being pumped, dumped, used. Jumping into things on the spur of the moment, only to regret it later. All dignity lost. But then the light comes along and you're attracted to it. You found yourself a chosen one. And you like what you see. You like your experience. Something wonderful starting to happen inside you. Things are starting to change. You're starting to see things differently. Yes, you're starting to realize that the light of life was there the whole time, but you couldn't see it. And now, this chosen one that you've met is showing you the light. But with the light is coming tremendous darkness. Your life 
is a lot darker than you thought it was. And this is starting to cause a ripple effect down through your family. Families start to see a bit of a glitter on your countenance. Like, what's happening here? Who is this person that you have met? You're not supposed to have a glow. And then the backbiting starts. What's happening to this person? Hey, they're not going to leave us in the dark, are they? You heard that saying? They left me in the dark. And when one of these people meets a chosen one, one that's in the light, there is going to be a panic. An aggressive, vicious, hostile panic that's going to assault the light. They're going to want to snuff out the light. But guess what? No. Darkness can't snuff out the light of an enlightened and awakened person. The light just shines and the darkness can't comprehend it. It can't do anything about it. Now the dark ones, the ones who want to sit in the dark and protect their victim mentality and martyr mentality and addictions and other manipulation and controlling behaviors, their narcissism, It's like they're just hitting their heads against the brick wall. Why isn't the light responding to our darkness? Well, unlike the darkness not being able to comprehend the light, guess what? Bad news for the masses. The light comprehends the darkness. Because not everyone that's in the light was in there the whole time. There are many of us that are lit up that know exactly how the darkness works what it's trying to do what angles it's going to come from and we just watch darkness has an incredible innate way of getting darker it pulls you into the shadows deeper and deeper and it gets scarier and nastier. Strange illnesses start to occur. Teeth rot before they're supposed to. Body parts start to fail unexpectedly. Headaches, migraines, organ troubles, cardiovascular diseases and mind trauma. So many of these things begin to fall upon the masses in their youth. But they hang on to their addictions and their alcoholism and their medications and their recreational weekend drugs. Some of them die from sexual diseases. Hello? Am I speaking to somebody out there? There's many of you that have got diseases from your careless, reckless sex, sexual activities that you didn't think anybody knew anything about. But guess what? The light shines in the darkness. And the darkness comprehends it not. But that doesn't mean the, not, the light's not there. Oh, it's there, all right. And that's why at the end, when you will stand before your creator, you'll have nothing because the light was there the whole time. All you'll have, like all the rest of us, all the rest of us chosen ones, is our belief in the Messiah, the Lord Jesus Christ. He is the light of life, the light of man, the Bible says. Let him light your light. Want your light to shine? Come into the light of your Creator. He'll show you out. He's the mechanic. Spirit to spirit. That's why the enemy of the narcissist is the super empath. Because the super empath, not only does he have empathy, 
He has tremendous, incredible power against darkness. He knows what the darkness is going to do before it happens. You don't believe me. Ask some of the women I've been with. I've walked them through with insight into things that they just did not believe were going to happen and they happened right down to the T. The super empath never underestimate his life. You ever patted a dog standing on a piece of foam in the middle of the ocean? I have. You ever taught a kid how to be a professional tradesman? I have. Doesn't. It's time you stopped and realized your thinking is limited. But God's isn't. He is the one that is going to bring you out of the chaos and calamity, the debt, the confusion, the migraines, the headaches, the trouble, the division, the insecurity, the shame, the guilt, the loss of relationships. You know what it's like to be warm against that light. The narcissist fears the super empath because the super empath knows the darkness but the darkness can't comprehend it. I'm Reverend Dr. J.W. Morrison, Theologist. It's time you all stopped and looked in the mirror. The mirror that shines on the inside, that gets past the outward reflection of yourself. You see, the narcissist, he wants to mirror the people, or she, the people around them. If you like donuts, the narcissist likes donuts at the start. If you like holding cars, the narcissist will like holding cars at the start. But as the shiny new toy needs to be polished, as the mask starts to fall off, the narcissist proceeds into the shadows, back into the addictions, the alcohol, the medications, the sourness. But the light was there the whole time. That is going to be the hard part. The light is there right now for you to reach out and to begin your journey into your full potential, into health and the best version of yourself. I'm Reverend Dr. J.W. Morrison, Theologist. Bye for now.